What's up guys? Coach Joe, Garage de la Swole, covering another mind-bending topic of max effort upper days for the conjugate method. So if you haven't watched any of the previous videos of me exploring the galaxy of the conjugate method, please go and check those out. It'll help you understand more of what I'm talking about. If not, good luck. Uh, but I just did a video on a max effort lower day, so I took the same concepts and go over what I'm gonna be doing for a max effort upper day. And we're gonna start off by either doing a bench or overhead press variation. Now for me, being in the sport of strongman, that presents a little bit more complication with how I do the overhead and the bench press because typically strongman is gonna be more overhead driven than bench pressing. We never really ever bench press in strongman, uh, but that's something I'm trying to figure out along the way. So. You guys, primarily, if you're not worried about your overhead press, we'll just do some sort of bench variation. You can use this template here. If you wanna experiment with overhead press variations or the overhead press in general, you can do that as well. Now, I did mention in the previous video how you can alternate between a bench and a overhead press variation week by week. So week one could be bench, week two could be overhead, week three could be bench, week four could be overhead. That way you're going back and forth with the variations on this max effort day. Uh, for me, I've just been keeping it the same because I just wanna see how this works and I'll adjust and fine tune as time goes on. So if you follow this journey of conjugate method, we are not gonna probably end up where we started. So for right now, I kept it simple. I'm just gonna stick with close grip block press uh, on the bench, okay? and. On week one, we're gonna do a five rep max and we're gonna do two to three back off sets. Once again, those back off sets are gonna be anywhere from taking off 10 to 20% of that repetition max for the day. And we're gonna do uh, as many reps as we can until we hit an RP8 for the back offs. So if you wanna progressively overload this, even on week one, you could do one back off set. Then week two, you do two back off sets. Then you do three back off sets. Then maybe you do four back off sets. If not, you can always just stick to at least two or three back offs. Once again, taking off 10 to 20% for that repetition max number, and then you're just gonna am rep it until you hit an RP8, and then that's what you record for your back off sets for the volume. Now, once you do week two, you're doing a three rep max, following the back off progression. Week three, you're gonna work to a one rep max, follow the back off progression. And then week four, you have the option to deload or once again, work to something heavy and maybe you don't do the back offs so that you're just you know saving some volume and managing your fatigue. Totally up to you on how you wanna run it. And then you could start back at the top after that week four. Supplemental lifts, okay, so the supplemental part of this is we wanna pick a variation that we're still going heavy in and we're gonna work between that three to six rep range. So we're still in that strength rep range and we're able to push pretty hard and we're working on a weak area that's gonna help increase our competition lift. So for me, I chose to do incline bench. So we're gonna do three to four sets, looking for that three to six reps. If you wanted to progressively do it week by week, week one, you're doing three sets, five to six reps. Week two, you're doing three sets, four to five reps. And then week three, you're doing three, to, uh, three sets of three to four reps. Week four, you could deload if you wanted to, you could work up to a heavy triple or something like that to give you an example. Uh, but once again, you're gonna figure that out. And we're trying to hit these uh, sets and reps anywhere between RP seven and nine. So we don't wanna full send it on the supplemental work, but we want just enough uh, volume that we're stimulating strength gains. And we're also working on the weak areas of the lift. Now when it comes to our accessories or the repetition method, you guys should just think lots of volume, bodybuilding, uh, this is typically where if you have machines, you can use them, uh, or if you wanna isolate a muscle, these are great for putting those types of exercises in there. So for me, uh, I wanna start off by doing some barbell rows. I like to get a little bit of back volume in on this day. I actually do more back volume on my dynamic effort day. Uh, just kind of separate the muscle groups a little bit, but when it looks for overall uh, total sets and volume, I find it good to get at least two days worth of frequency for some sort of muscle group. So for me, I'm gonna do barbell rows there. Then I'm gonna focus on triceps because usually when it comes to pressing, the triceps is gonna be the limiting factor. So I'm doing some dumbbell tricep rockers. And then after that, I'm gonna uh, just finish out the tricep with some push downs. And then if I wanted to, and I'm feeling like I can, I'll probably do one shoulder exercise. And for this, I was just gonna do a seated overhead dumbbell press. So. 
When doing these, we're typically gonna do two to four sets, anywhere from that 10 to 12 rep range. You can maybe push it to 15 reps if you wanted to. Probably wouldn't go too much over that, and I probably wouldn't go under eight reps because we are trying to just accrue volume to a smaller muscle group. And as you can see, we have a compound lift, and then we get more isolated as we go down in the list, uh, just because I find it best where we have most of our focus up here with the compounds, and then kind of our, our little muscle groups that you know we just wanna get a good amount of blood flow to. They're, they're not gonna be super fatiguing. We're gonna put towards the end of the workout. So for me, this is what I did, because I need to strengthen my back always, uh, the triceps for sure when it comes to benching or overhead pressing, and then getting some delt work in uh, throughout the week by just adding in one or two exercises per workout for a few sets. Now, if this doesn't align with you, Typically, the accessories are gonna do something to help your chest, your triceps, your back, or your shoulders. So if you wanted to focus more on your chest instead of the rows, you could throw a chest exercise there. Or if you wanted to do more of something with your uh, back or shoulders, you can easily substitute any of those exercises to make it work for you specifically. So that's kind of been what's, what's tough, uh, but also great about conjugate, is it's very open to the individual, okay? So you need to assess your strengths and your weaknesses. And typically, whenever you're working up to something heavy, you can see where you get stuck, and that's usually a good indicator of the muscle groups and areas that we have to work on. Uh, but then we wanna be able to recognize that first of all, and then be able to plug and play where they need to go in terms of either our supplemental work or our accessory repetition method work. So that's kind of how I laid out a basic max effort upper day. Uh, I'll probably do a dynamic effort lower and dynamic effort upper video. Uh, but once again, if you haven't watched kind of my grand overview of what I'm doing, I highly recommend that video. It's a little bit lengthy, but I think it'll make a lot more sense if you check that out. Once again, I am beginning at this. I've been training for a long ass time and I've run a lot of different programs. So initially it's gonna be a lot of learning, uh, but I'm, I'm quick to learn because I have that prior knowledge of all the other things that I've done in the past prior. Uh, so don't destroy me too much in the comment sections. I know like conjugate method is like a ride or die type system and I'm just trying to learn and get an experience for it so I can better myself as an athlete and as a coach. Uh, I don't wanna get stuck in my box, right? A lot of times coaches get stuck with the way they like to do things uh, and I'm just trying to experiment. I'm in a good point in my career where I have the time and the flexibility to try out different program models and I'm finding things that I like about it. I'm finding some things that probably I won't use as much, but where I'm gonna end up will definitely not be where I started in the beginning of this. So it's a lot of experimentation, it's a lot of growing, uh, but I'm here for it, I'm excited. Uh, I'm always down for, for constructive feedback. So if you guys have stuff that you wanna put down below in the comment section, let's get some conversation going. I can always learn from you guys. Hopefully you guys can learn from me. And that's all I have. So if you like the video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. If you're looking to support me in other ways, there's a link tree link where we go over all the different programming options. I got one-on-one -on -one coaching. I got a programming app. I got a la carte programs. I got the Patreon. So many different ways that you guys can help me out, continue to do what I do. Uh, but any support is just more than welcome. And thank you guys so much. So until then, stay in lean, mean, strength, health machine. I'll catch up with you guys next time. Peace.